Hi, Stuart here, and today we're going to talk about how to make a finite state machine. This is a super quick overview. So a finite state machine is a way of showing state transitions for an entity. So in our example, we're going to be talking about an e-commerce order, and you can read more about finite state machines on Wikipedia. But what we're trying to do as designers and architects is say, okay, I've got this entity, and what can happen to this entity changes over time, and I need a way of expressing where the entity is in its journey. It's often used in workflow systems, for example, and what are the possible next steps in its journey that it could take, and under what conditions would it take them? And so you can represent finite state machines as tables or diagrams, ideally both. And typically finite state machines have a single entrance, but they could have lots of exits. And so let's just walk through one and see what we end up with. So again, we're gonna do a e-commerce order thing. And generally speaking, the, the states are generated by an enumeration or in a database, you would have a set of states represented in a table. So, you know, here's the database view. And the order states table is just a list of all the order states an order entity, so a row in the order table, could be in. So if it's a one, it's in draft. And if it's at five, the order is currently shipping. And so then we need a second table that says, okay, here are all the valid transitions that I can make from one state to another. And the deal is, when you express it this way, that you can't go from say one to six because there's no row that says from one to six. And so by having pairs of from and twos along with the reason why we'd wanna go from a three to a four or a six to a seven, it also is how we can adapt and, and change as our business rules change over time. So we can add things to the bottom of our order states table and we can rearrange our from and to table, transitions table, and we can adopt our business logic to match. So this is a useful way of storing the data and using it. You can use a SQL or NoSQL database or whatever else you want, but it's not very visual. So to make a visual representation of our diagram, what we do is we use circles to represent the states. And here I've put the ID of each state in the center. And then for every transition from and to, we have an arrow. And on that arrow, I've put the same label as we had in the table on the previous page. And now visually you can walk a business owner or stakeholder or even your fellow developers through what you think the process needs to be. And then you can argue about it. You can go, well, you know, yeah, we should go from, from three to four ship. That's great. But we're missing a whole, what happens when our shipment gets canceled? Oh, we need a state 11 that is shipment canceled. So we need a five to 11 and then 11 should go to nine because nine is our order is dead and 10 is our order is happy. And by the way, the numbers don't have to be sequential. You can use any identifier you want. Although in most databases, it's probably efficient to use an integer, but don't get hung up on having the flow be in strict status order. And in fact, the same rules apply to finite state definition tables is applied to enumerations in C Sharp or Java. Don't rearrange them and do give them constant values for each semantic meaning. If something is in the new order status, which is two, then in your enumeration, uh, you should say order equals two. I mean, you should nail these things down because re- uh, numbering the states, even if you update the state transition, means you probably have to go in and fix up a bunch of code, too. Once you have a finite state machine that's database-driven, it's really easy to make a workflow or a pipeline that says, if I'm going to go from three to five, I'm going to trigger this set of pipeline steps. And you can add that to your database transition diagram. You can add the name of the method or whatever, or you can just have a switch statement that says that my starting state is a three, my ending state is a five, and therefore I'm gonna execute this piece of business logic. 